Hello and welcome um, to the third um, episode of our webinar this year, um, Digital Materialities. We're waiting for um, um, other people to connect um, and then we can start. Uh, Geraldine, who normally co-hosts, uh, apologizes for not being able um, to attend tonight. So I'll be hosting all on my own. Which means I've got to talk to you while pe pe get, letting people in. Um, So just some housekeeping words. Um, obviously, you're very welcome to have your cameras on, uh, but you know you you know that you should mute yourself so that there's no background noise when uh, Eliane will present. Obviously, when it comes to Q and A, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask your questions directly. Um, I'll introduce Eliane. Um, so Eliane Delarmina is Associate Professor, Maître de Conférence uh, in Anglophone Studies or Visual Studies at the University Paris-Cité. Um, she's the author of Houses and Homes, Photographier la Maison aux États-Unis, 1930-1990. Um, so Houses and Homes, um, uh, Photographing Houses or Homes. Uh, in the States, 1930-1990, uh, uh, which was published uh, in French and look at the publishers called Le Point du Jour in 2020. Uh, and she wrote a PhD dissertation about photographic images in the history of public housing uh, in Chicago from um, 1937 to 2000. And I believe today's uh, presentation is going to be based at least on that research. Um, so, Eliane, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, and thank you, Ariane, for the invitation to the seminar. Um, so, the, the, I'm going to share my screen first, uh, which is here. Okay. So um, the Chicago Housing Authority was established in 1937 to build and manage public housing in the city of Chicago. It was both financially independent from the local political context and very much dependent on it for sites, for example. And more generally, as a public agency that until 1954 was trying to move beyond economic, political, social and racial lines, it needed as much public support of its activities as it could get. And therefore, as part of its regular activities, it, uh, it started in 1941, a dynamic visual communication enterprise, making use of any materials it could, mostly photographs, because they were less expensive and more versatile than film. And uh, they could be used both on exhibition panels, as here, or in publications. These photographs were in black and white, even though color could be introduced in print to enliven the material. This reliance on black and white was more generally the case for institutions that dealt with urban renewal. So when one comes across a rare colored view of an urban planning exhibition in the 1950s, it appears that the photographs exhibited are all in black and white, just as they would be in architectural forum or in other hybrid architectural magazines. And black and white was even more the norm for photographs dealing with social commentary. So when I was researching the visual production of the early decades of the Chicago Housing Authority, and um, as is common for most of the researchers who encounter color photographs from before the 60s, I was quite shocked to come across colored slides in the CHA collection. Um, and I, I will often say CHA for Chicago Housing Authority because it's difficult for me to discipline myself saying these four words. 
Um, so in addition to 15 boxes of unindexed photographs from the 1940s to the 1990s, there were three trays like this blue tray on the left containing slides from various decades. But um, the, reading other archival records, uh, it became clear to me that the CHA in fact held hundreds of Kodachrome slides in the 1940s only, like the one on the, on the right. I am showing this photograph on the right also as a disclaimer for the fact that I will be showing low quality reproductions of these slides um, because I, I produce these reproductions roughly like you see on the right, um, just laying them in front of my computer screen. Because um, in 2016, I gained access to um, the historical photographs collection of the Chicago Housing Authority in bulk, uh, which was lucky, um, because I happened to ask about that collection at a time when the current photographer for the agency was um, thinking about a potential project with it and therefore had ordered it all from the storage site in order to, to have a look at it in the central offices. But this meant I had no lights table, um, and I also did not have unlimited access to that office. Therefore, um, the low quality reproductions we will see. Um, but yet, in this um, in this case, if this type of reproduction loses the details and leaves us very far from the experience of the viewers of these original productions, it also allows us to keep the object in sight. The try on the left um, is at least from, uh, at the earliest from the 1960s, to be used with a more modern and more automatic slide projector than would have been used in the late 40s. Because slides would then have been fed individually in a projector more or less like the one um, on, the, on the right here, on that um, codec app. Uh, app. Kodachrome slides used a recent technology developed by the Eastman Kodak company called the subtractive process because it was using a three layer emulsion that separated and then recombined the three primary colors um, of, the, of the spectrum, of the light spectrum. And in that, it then produced images with saturated colors as can be seen on the, in the form of these printed reproductions. Uh, the 35 millimeter Kodachrome film was first marketed in 1936 by Kodak, and it lent itself especially well to photographers who had little technical skills and little technical pretensions because it had to be developed at Kodak laboratories. Starting in 1938, Kodak would return the slides Sorry, return the slides uh, mounted in a cardboard mount like the one you see here um, in a format that was ready to use and easier to manipulate than the film strip that was used before. So this was the end product of the amateur use of Kodachrome film, so without, pr without uh, printing on paper, and it corresponds to the gardening slides of the, of the CHA. And in contrast, the CHA collection does include a few color slides by professional photographers that also correspond to black and white prints, but that's a, that's a separate case. So Kodachrome film had a low sensibility to light, which made it especially suited to the outdoors. And these constraints, as, as is visible here, were turned by the firm into a commercial argument, like the saturated colors themselves. Um, and therefore, Kodachrome was meant to record the outdoors, the summer gardens in all their glory. And I have included this 1948 ad on the right, uh, not because this was the precise projector that the CHA was using. I do not know what projector they were using over the years, um, but it shows how the technology was in the 1940s, not just nor primarily a family activity, because in this specific ad, we see an, an auditorium, um, a setting that justifies the new higher quality projector that is here marketed. So whatever the projector is used by the CHA, such a collective setting for the projection is closer to how the garden slides were shown than a living room projection from the 1960s would be. And indeed, they were shown by housing authority management and not in a private setting at all. But as I will explain, the numerous garden slides were shown to groups of residents of public housing rather than to an external public. And we have here, uh, therefore, a clear instance of internal visual communication. The Chicago Housing Authority with the Kodachrome slides was innovating, taking advantage of a recent low cost and no first visual technology that was valuable because of its vivid colors 
and because it could be projected to a group in a situation of address with a presenter showing slides to an audience. I want to quickly mention here two examples from outside the Chicago Housing Authority. One is the colored slides of modern housing produced in California by public housing advocate Catherine Bauer, um, which Nicole krupp -Ost has analyzed in depth in her study of photography and public housing in Los Angeles in, 1940, in the 1940s. So in addition to the cultural meaning of color in modern architecture, in this case, Nicole Krupp has emphasized the innovative, practical, and experimental use of colored slides by Bauer as an international housing activist and as an educator, but not as a photographer. She has, so Nicole Krupp has emphasized the mobility of the slides as objects that could be rearranged, carried in transcontinental trips, but also exchanged between actors of the modern housing movement. In the case of the um, CHA's gardening slides, the slides did not leave Chicago. In fact, they mostly circulated within, they exclusively in fact circulated within the projects. But in both cases with Bauer and with the CHA, the slides are produced by users of images rather than by professional producers of images like photographers. And in the case of gardening slides, I do believe that they were produced by staff members of the Housing Authority and not by photographers working on contracts for the, for the agency. And then they were, they were certainly used by employees who were not members of the communication department of the agency. So the, both the producers and the users of the images were, not, uh, were no image specialists, if you wish. My second example of slides, of colored slides that were not produced for nor used by the CHA are these two colored slides of extremely substandard housing. So they're not extremely legible, but um, we see a resident um, pointing to um, faulty wiring on the right and uh, water dripping from the walls on the, on the left. So I believe these slides to have been produced in 1941, so extremely early, because they are very close to a movie produced by the author of the slides, and they might even be, in fact, from the movie itself. Jesse Lloyd O'Connor was a member of the famous settlement house of Hull House in Chicago. She had worked as a radical journalist in the 1930s, but she was only an amateur photographer. And in filming and photographing substandard housing, she was her childhood friends from the wealthy suburbs of Chicago as close to poor housing as possible. The colored slide or film is then the best substitute to an actual tour. And interestingly, such an amateur does not care about the bifurcation of visual culture that Sally Stein has described in her dissertation as happening in the 1930s with, on the one hand, advertising and entertainment becoming um, made of, of images in color, on the one and, and on the other hand, uh, social commentary solidifying as black and white imagery. The Chicago Housing Authority holds some slides of the pre-public housing sites, what public housing was replacing, um, in this case slums, uh, that were produced by professional photographers, like uh, these exterior and in interior shots. This is, this is the inside of the wooden house we see on the right here. Um, so views of converted and, and overcrowded housing that, that was uh, photographed by Vores Fisher, a photographer who produced many images for the CHA and, and especially images of the new housing, in fact. Such images uh, would have been shown as part of illustrated talks to members of the public. Um, Emil Hirsch, who was the um, assistant to the director of public relations and later director of public relations at CHA, would regularly give illustrated lectures to various groups in the mid 40s. Using slides or allowed him to rearrange images and change the accompanying scripts in order to adapt the presentation to specific audiences. For instance, he could focus specifically on health and housing when he addressed members of a tuberculosis institute. I have not found any detailed uh, lecture script or, or precise description of the content of the lectures, but in keeping with CHA communication in general, these talks would likely have included the bad old housing, as well as the good new housing, including some slides of social services that again would be produced by professional photographers. 
But given the possibilities offered by equilochrome slides in terms of color, it is unsurprising that the slide bank and presumably the talks pay a lot of attention to vegetation and typically to loans. Vegetation and landscape was then a key concern for the Chicago Housing Authority, as illustrated by a famous speech by the executive secretary, Elizabeth Wood, who's here uh, referring to both the financial costs of um, the demolition and rebuilding of slums, but also the human cost of displacing tens of thousands of, um, of residents of these neighborhoods and disrupting their lives. Um, and so she says the results to be obtained by the rebuilding, if its extraordinary costs are to be justified, is a series of residential neighborhoods. So attractive, I mean, in terms of grass, flowers, shrubs, land patterns, etc., as to compare favorably with suburbs. If the results are not that good, the expenditures are wasted. Flowers were, on the one hand, effective elements for the improved living conditions of the families and factors for making a new citizenry through better cities. But on the other hand, they were also elements in, them, in themselves in the communication of public housing. The aspect of the housing had to be good advertisement, as in pictures of beautiful green loans, or as in pictures of residents enjoying space as they would in the suburbs. And here we see in the photograph in the bottom left, you see a playpen that is positioned on the loan. And in the, on the right, you see loan chairs on the, in front of row houses, um, which are um, more direct references to a suburban lifestyle than a playground or another form of collective, um, uh, collective uh, public space or shared space would have been um, as, as a more kind of standard a form of open space in public housing. In fact, the individual garden, as opposed to the open space and the collective playground, is emerging as a new and important theme in the visual communication of the CHA in the mid 40s, as if this was a second step after the initial construction and landscaping in the uh, late uh, 30s and early 40s. This new theme appears if we compare two versions of the same pamphlet, with um, in the 1941 version on the left, institutional landscaping with trees and um, large shrubs. And on the right in the post-war version in 47, the new housing appears um, is represented by individual gardening with loans that are, um, that, that are marked by small boundaries between um, neighbors and uh, with individual improvements in the forms of um, ornaments. Um, uh, theme of residence gardening is also very present in a publication by someone called Louis Courts, who is unidentified, but who was using photographs from the Chicago Housing Authority. Uh, so these two pages are quite interesting, both in terms of uh, the history of gardening practices at um, in Chicago public housing and in terms of their representation, because we see both ornamental gardening, so uh, that woman watering a flower box on the right, a family enjoying its loan, and uh, what was called victory gardening, so um, subsistence farming, if you wish, uh, within the city with residents planting vegetables um, as part of um, as a patriotic gestures, uh, uh, trying to subsist on their own production um, on, on the home front. And the racial distribution of these photographs is significant because um, the um, Guard, the victory gardens are tended by white residents, while we see a black family enjoying its um, ornamental garden. And in this respect, the case of a specific development called the Robert Brooks Homes is um, highly significant um, because it was housing for African Americans, but also it was war housing uh, in the sense of um, housing that was uh, meant specifically for the families of um, workers in the war industries. So it had a, um, a stronger patriotic um, accent than, than other developments. So images in the CHA collection document an extensive program of victory gardening uh, by families who were presumably not far removed from agricultural life in the South, next of the Great Migration um, towards Northern cities like Chicago. So here we see an individual backyard that has been turned into a vegetable garden and another photograph shows 
um, an alignment of, of gardens um, in front of row houses. Um, and this is in an industrial sector in the, in, in the center of Chicago, and we see some, some shadows in the background uh, that, that show that this is absolutely not on the outskirts of the, of the city, in fact. Um, so it is striking that those images have never been printed anywhere in a report by the CHA. Um, in fact, this triangular cutout in this photograph corresponds to this detail in the publication by the CHA, and it's precisely the, the part of the photograph that does not show any vegetable or any gardening activity. Um, because um, this is significant because, in fact, photographs that show African American families that are somehow upgraded to a suburban or at least middle, style, middle class lifestyle were more valuable to the, um, to the communication around the social program of the housing authority than images that would have been evocative of a black southern lifestyle in the 1940s. Uh, and so it is no chance that this um, project of the Brooks Homes was both um, the earliest to, to really focus, to, to have its management really focus a lot of attention on loans, on loans, the care of loans, the care of the boundaries of loans, etc. Et um, and then that the CHA printed these images repeatedly, really paying quite a lot of attention to, to that early achievement of Guardian. But, uh, but this was um, only an early success for um, a broader CHA-wide gardening program of which the gardening slides are an integral part. And, and I will now stop showing images printed in reports and um, concentrate on the slides themselves that were, uh, as I say, most likely shown only to public housing residents. This is part of a rethinking of the manager-tenant relations that is um, evoked by Elizabeth Wood in this um, extract from, um, from a report. So a year ago, our most serious difficulty lay in the vacancy rate. Our, our presence greatest vulnerability lies in the physical appearance of the projects. It seems to me that the housing projects must improve in appearance or the public housing program justifiably will be open to damaging criticisms. The correction of the condition goes to the very heart of management, particularly manager-tenant relations. The managers have learned that they cannot employ enough staff to keep the projects picked up as long as the tenants continue to throw litter around. The problem cannot therefore be solved simply by adding to the maintenance staff. They have also come to recognize that absence of litter is not enough, that the projects will only lose their institutional look and will come to look more like homes if the tenants take over the development as, the, as their own. The stress on flowers this spring has been part of this program. Um, and she evokes a, a drive on the part of management to use all possible advertising techniques in praising the tenants' appreciation and desire for a beautiful community. So these are advertising techniques, in fact, included um, bulletins in this or that development here, Brook, Brooks Homes, that announces different um, activities and, and uh, resources for, um, for making Brooks more beautiful in a, in a Brooks Beautiful Week. It also included uh, how-to manuals, and in this case, a gardening handbook, um, of which we see a fragment here that was reproduced in a monthly report, and this is the only trace I have been able to locate of that, of that handbook. Uh, in both cases, the amateur dimension of the production is very is, is quite striking. In the case of the handbook, the, the head of landscape services can grow, and therefore she produces the handbook herself, and there is clearly no professional draftsman who's in, involved. The slides were a third and, um, and, and the most important uh, part of that advertising program. Um, they were so pr presumably produced by staff members. And, um, and, and then, so comparing the slides among themselves, um, there are different uh, specific categories that appear that clearly show that they were meant to, uh, prom to provide examples and, and tips or emulation for specific gardening actions or um, organizing of the gardens on the part of residents. For example, here we see examples of various types of, um, of white picket fences, so either pointed or straight, combined with different types of ornaments. Um, there is also a lot of emphasis uh, that's put on wind, um, window boxes, so um, like this, that are also visible here and there. 
there are photographs of that are clearly um, framed around flower beds. So they, the fact that we can see car cars in the back, for example, is quite uncommon uh, for usually photographs try to to really uh, show pure residential environments with no traffic. So this this is more of a of an un, unwanted. Uh, um, inclusion in the in the frame, but really the, the 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 person who took the photograph was clearly aiming for a full view of the flower bed. Same here, and then uh, other photographs that just show flowers um, that clearly um, you know, could, could never be used in anything like a, a CHA annual report. So um, very specific type of, of material. These slides had a very specific uh, circulation because not only did they not leave the project, they kept being circulated from this to that housing development, but they also did not leave the community. Um, they were only shown to public housing residents. And, and so this connects, in fact, these slides to the family and friends-based practice of codex slides in the following decades, even though this was not yet um, a central family activity in the 1940s. The slides also did not leave the original context of gardening. Uh, these are slides of resident gardening for resident gardening. There, there is no, the, the, those flowers could not serve to, will not be used, these photographs of flowers will not be used to show, for example, good health provided for children, or they really um, have one specific objective when they are being produced and, and they keep that, that focus, they keep that, that um, um, specific object in their, in their uses. It's also this lack of mobility in a way also implies that the loans and flowers and fences that we can see on this, that we can imagine that people would see on the screen, that we can see on the slides, um, were very close to what could be affected here or there um, in, in the development where the slides were, were being shown. Um, they were close in, in space and they were close in time because um, management would usually show photographs from the previous, from, from recent years to, to uh, this was not a. This was not something that was taking place over a long time, um, and um, and so the, the, the proximity of example um, is reinforced by the fact that similar supply, similar advice um, could, could be and, and, and could be provided, and that this is um, advertising the product of the activities of someone close. So, in other words, there is a strong proximity between the actual grounds of the project and the expense of radiant green that was projected on the wall. And even um, we can even go so far as to say that there's not just a proximity between these surfaces, but also a high level of interpenetration between the images and the gardens. And this is striking in this account of by CHA of the reaction of some public housing residents at seeing a significant portion of the slide collection from their own development. And um, apparently they react by renewing their plans um, in the form of a tenants management garden committee for uh, the next uh, season. In this case, um, one is tempted to say that the slide is almost the end product of the gardening activity as much as the enjoyment of the garden itself. Paradoxically, um, the physical gardens were more fleeting than these slides. And in this way, these um, visual and, and written archives allow us to recover something of the environmental experience of Chicago public housing residents that otherwise would be invisible and unknown. It also obviously extends the history of Kodachrome and its odd uses. But these gardening slides matter in yet another way because they complexify our understanding of a key mid-century moment of urban renewal um, and social engineering through public housing. So I must say here quickly that within the complex history of public housing in the US, the Chicago example in particular is known as a key part of the construction of what historian Arnold Hirsch has called the second ghetto. And as part of the remaking of tight knit neighborhoods into alienating superblocks. But the 1940s Kodachrome slides were the products of an institution that was highly sensitive to the material and sensorial aspect of urban reform. It was attentive not so much to high culture and art as a means of promoting change as to the culture of slum dwellers 
as something deep rooted that could only be changed by sustained engagement. And so one could say that the CHA was trying to act on and with the sensorium of its residents um, as is, as, is um, as can be read in a text that was used in a pamphlet produced by CHA that I will now read because I think it is quite eloquent in that respect. So this is about half of the text of the, of the whole pamphlet, which is entitled Flowers Grow Where Slums Once Stood. Walk in a slum on a summer day. You will know it is summer because of the hot, oppressive air, the smells and the raucous voices of children playing in the streets. You will see patches of sky, but hardly a blade of grass or a single tree, only dirty, unpainted, dilapidated houses crowded together and teeming with people. The ground is covered over with cinders or surfaced with concrete. When you come upon one of Chicago's public housing developments, it is like stepping into a different world. Everywhere you see green, green of lawns, green of shrubbery, green of trees. Pleasant vine-covered buildings stand in harmonious groups with plenty of space left for sun and air and children's play. Everywhere you see gardens and overhead stretches a sky that somehow looks bluer and sunnier than it did in the sun. For many of the people who live in these homes, this is the first time in their lives that they have known anything but dusty pavements and crowded rooms. They have learned for, for the first time what it is to handle damp earth, to see tiny green shoots poking up through the ground, to smell growing things. They buy seeds, they plant vines, doorways, flowers in their window boxes, shrubs and grass in their front yards. They are immensely proud of their loans and flowers and of the whole community of homes. The gardens of Chicago's housing development have a significance more important even than the beauty of flowers or the food value of vegetables. They symbolize a deep and fundamental change that has taken place in the lives of the people who work at them. When evening comes, family work creatively together and have no need of getting as far away from home as they can. They get together and discuss many things. In the springtime, they speak of seed and gardening methods and they develop together a sense of community life. So, of course, here the garden is conceived both as symbolic of a change in the residence, but also as the means for that change. And I am struck by uh, the sensorial dimension of this text, and, and I believe that Elizabeth Woods, the head of the CHA, might have written this text herself, given that she taught creative writing at Vassar College before moving into social work and becoming an important actor in public housing policy in the nation. Um, so before reaching my conclusion in the form of a few final curriculum slides, um, I want to show another bit of text by Wood that was less celebratory and sunny and poetic, but that also speaks to a sensorial activation of all actors of public housing, managers, supporters, as well as residents. So this is an extract from an important speech that was widely circulated as a reprint, and that includes, um, in the beginning of the quote, a very famous snippet that is quoted again and again in histories of public housing, histories of planning, histories of Chicago, histories of urban renewal, etc. Planning must be bold and comprehensive, or it is useless and wasted. And this is indeed a speech in which Elizabeth Woods argues for the rerouting of traffic outside of residential areas, um, what will be known as the super block design option, arch nemesis of critics of urban renewal like Jane Jacobs in 1960s. But this speech is striking also for how it delves into the practicalities of slum life with a very precise account of the problem of garbage that is here given to public works officials. Um, so the planning involves not just brick and mortar and money and, and, and practical matters, but also a head-on facing of the problem of the cultural, to use a fancy term, level of the slum dweller. This means that there shall be instituted an educational program for slum dwellers through every available medium in relation to their living habits. I can best illustrate this in terms of garbage. Garbage disposal in slum areas is a simple and primitive thing. A child is sent with an overflowing container to the alley and he may dump it on a pile or throw it in the general direction of an overflowing container. If orange peels, ashes, tin cans are dropped along the way, nobody cares. When this same family moves into a public housing project, it brings along the same indifference about dropped orange peel and tin cans and the ultimate disposition of the garbage in incinerator or can. If the wet bottom of the paper bag falls out and spills coffee ground in the hallway, the family cares little until a few visits from the management have impressed upon it a new standard. 
If the same family were to move to another house, not under management, there would be no one to comment upon, upon or much less discipline the sloppy habits. It is in just such homely ways that neighborhoods deteriorate. An educational program that public housing takes on includes many other things, the encouragement of the feeling for making their neighborhood one with flowers, trees, etc. So it is difficult, of course, not to react to the notion of discipline in this text. Uh, that, that seems to be the very concept of management at play here. Institute an educational program, impress a new standard, discipline habits. And this is undoubtedly part of a social engineering program. But it is also a very detailed account of the interface between residents and their physical environment, and of the interface between management and residents. The gardening program evoked at the end of this quote works at a more seductive level than garbage. But it also involves working at culture. If the CHA turned over landscaping to the residents, it was not out of necessity, but also as part of a period in the history of that institution when it had a high level of sensitivity to the experience of its residents. And I am struck here in this quote by the juxtaposition of the times feeling for making. I will end by showing a few slides of gardens with residents. These images are significant because the residents are not gardening in them, but they are posing in their gardens. Sometimes they are posing with the flowers, the, the group on the right. I don't think that I don't think that they hold any tools or are do, doing anything. I think they're just standing by and, and somehow touching or showing the flowers. Um, and sometimes they will point directly at some at some flower beds. In these images, it is as if the residents were taking part in the production of the photographic image of this environment that they have taken part in shaping. And they are thus engaging in an exchange with management and beyond with their fellow public housing residents. And so I would argue that this is a visual formulation of engagement, both of the residents with our housing and of the institution with its residents through the bright interface of cultivated and projected plantings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marine. Oh, sorry, Eliane. <laughs> I see Marine. <laughs> Thank you, Eliane. Thank you. You're welcome to, to put your um, cameras on if you are, uh, obviously. Um, and ask your questions directly. I had, um, I, I'll start with a silly question maybe, but you know, um, on the slides, um, there were these uh, kind of stickers, uh, different colored stickers. What do they correspond to? Whether the photographers or the, uh, I imagine it's some kind of filing. Well, I I wasn't able to, to make a systematic um, analysis of it because I do not have all the slides, partly because of how I dealt with the material I had at hand, but partly because half of that collection of slides has in fact ended up at another institution because someone at the CHA thought that these were going to be lost. And anyway, so some, some of these slides are elsewhere. So I have, I have not been able to, to collect everything and, and compare them and, and try and, and find a system. But my impression is that they correspond to um, maybe to certain sequences or um, maybe some of the gardening slides, if they are labeled with this or that uh, color can be used in, um, uh, in presentations, maybe you know, about other subjects. So that would be a way to maybe extend um, to, 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 to access, I mean, to have a hint of other uses than just showing flowers to residents. Um, but also some of those uh, stickers have been covered by other stickers or some, so that's, it mostly shows the, the continued use of those uh, slides over a period of time and the fact that they were kept, up, kept on hold um, and, um, and used for a period, I think, of maybe five, six years mostly. 
um, and uh, but, it, but it's yes it's a it's a palimpsestic uh, texture that's that's not very easy to 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 read through and then the the information that's written it's it's mostly the the name of the of the development and the year and that's interesting because the fact that it's not all slides are dated and the fact that uh, the date is there really shows that um, these were I think this is part of the kind of almost family family atmosphere you know it's like showing what those people did last year uh, or two years ago and uh, in, in the hope that maybe next year or if you remember what the web like or what March was like in 45 maybe you can get an, an idea of um of how that was achieved or so it's it's I think this is significant and um um but but then the, it's it's probably I think that the, the, these photographs are maybe produced by different um actors maybe managers at different um housing projects would have had cameras and produced images it's 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 easy to imagine um, and 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 then the way that they were collected and um, and labeled might also not be completely systematic. And I think at, at some point all the slides are collected in the central office, but uh, but they were clearly produced um, locally. And the, and there's no system. It's really not um, an exploration of window boxes in all developments. There's, the people at Adams Homes are clearly obsessed with the flower boxes, and therefore there's no slides of, of these. And then there are some flower boxes in other developments that we can see in the slide, but there's no there's no survey of them or so it's it's really a, a non-systematic um accumulation of images thank you thank you that was really my question whether there's a you know what you could see the what the organization was whether it was rhetorical or um by year or by photographer by project or but i think you've kind of answered that it's difficult to see exactly how they were classified mm. and i also think that it's so the way that I, the form of the collection that I've seen is, well, partly chaos, but partly also um, a combination of, of different attempts at organizing. So the back of the photographs show labelings uh, also from different years. So there's, it's, a, it's a collection that has been used for a long time. Uh, and so the slides have not been labeled again and again, also because they came out of use quite soon, I think. Um, but the, but I'm not even sure that there was a, ever something that could be described as a photo library for the. I think that was a box of slides or a bank of slides, but I, but I doubt and maybe organized by year and project. But um, I, I not I I haven't come across any trace of anything like a system for organizing any photographs. So I think that everything was organized by projects and by for, for the prints printed photographs and then the slides must have been in their own box somewhere but yes i think that, that this was the way it worked thank you caroline yes thanks a lot Eliane. this was fantastic um i have a question that's actually related to Ariane's. um i was wondering if you could speak a little bit more well you've already done that a little bit to to the, the materials that are part of these lectures um, you said that there was not a lot of um, information available on the producers and that they weren't really um, image specialists, but do we know how they went about um, elaborating these lectures, that is to say the sequence of images, um, and whether there was a typescript that would accompany the lectures or not, whether that would be if, if they were shown on a regular basis or not, and how that would um, perhaps, perhaps then also affect the uh, affect the audiences so do we know something about the reception how the audiences reacted to these lectures and perhaps in different circumstances you 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 said several times that they only circulate that they circulate exclusively within the community and within the housing authority and i'm wondering whether we have any traces of the public reaction also to those um well that's a that's a good question um so there's two types of um of, of projections or lectures on the one hand there's the the, the presentations to neighborhood groups or professional organizations or unions or um high school student, students university or high school students or um at least a bit like these groups might take tours of public housing also um and and so these 
these presentations most likely included some form of scripts, but um, the, I haven't I haven't come across any of these. But I know that the person who was making the who was giving these lectures was always um, the the assistant and later head of the information department. So um, he was so he he was the person in charge of producing this course for the institution. So he might have been able to just you know talk and talk about slides and so I don't know exactly how he was he was not a professional uh, presenter of photographs but he was a professional producer of discourse so so it's it's also possible that this was not even written but um but so that's one thing and then in the showing the photographs as part of um, the gardening program um, I have no trace of um, reactions apart from the notes about the Cabrini residents who are so happy to see their gardens in the slide banks that they have extra energy to to plan so that and this is filtered through the report of the of housing authority so but um, but this the fact that the that the collection grew over the years and that um, that, it, that the program um was successful enough for the CHA to organize flower festivals in the late 40s I think shows that there was a lot of um of, of interest on the part of residents and then how significant were the slides it's well the question of reception is as often um kind of a sphinx but um but it's still a um, the fact that the that the slides were produced for four years. It's both short, but it's also the time when the CHA was really focused on this. Then after forty nine, I did not mention this, but there was a, a new housing act that was passed, and urban renewal really changed scale. And the CHA was really absorbed into political uh, politicking first, and um, and just building and finding sites, and switched its attention more to building new housing than and 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 other. Um, Problems having to do with segregation, rather than uh, focusing very, you know, very in depth in um, on, on the on this kind of social management of desire, and because that's really what it's about. Though, again, using this advertising uh, material that the col that color photograph photographs were at the time, and that the um, so mixing the educational value of land and slides and the advertising value uh, dimension of color. Um, I think speaks to the, the fact that the, the authority was really trying to get at um, the desire of the residents for the feeling for making the neighborhood a better thing and therefore desire. So I think this is also these photographs are the materials the, from the photographic archive that are the closest to um, affect in what was aimed for and what we can imagine to have been the reception but but there's no we can only try and project from the images, I guess. Thank you. Marine? Yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to applaud, although your talk was excellent. <laughs> uh, false manner. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I wondered about the way you took the pictures of the slides. I mean, because you, you used your computer. Mm. To, I mean, my question is, um, you need a source of light to take yes. a picture of them. Yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting that the mm -hmm. way you, you got the picture is by using your computer. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, I don't know, it might seem a bit far-fetched, but I think no, in terms of uses, you know, it's nice. I mean, um, yeah. I also wondered about, uh, you know, the fact that they are meant to be projected, which means you, you have access to them by projecting light through them, and the the way it shifts from this to a print image and the difference it creates. I mean, you mentioned it, but I, I think it's interesting. Um, I have other ideas about gardening, but let's maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Just, uh, about um, using the light source of my computer to look to look at the slides, I have to say that my PowerPoint, the name of the file of my PowerPoint for today is slide slides. So, <laughs> yeah, so there is something about the contemporary interest for like, that, that cannot be separated from the fact that we project images um, all the time. Um, but the, um, uh, in terms of, yes, so in, in fact, the, the, the photograph, these slides have not been printed. I haven't found evidence of 
gardening of the slides of the gardening program being printed but today they are um so the, the collect the part of the collection that's part of the national public housing museum holding so that's a museum that's not that's that has been 15 years in the coming but that's not just a, not a museum so they have digitized the, the slides and they use them in some of their communication because these are colored images from the 1940s so it's it's a much more exciting communication material than any other archival mm. material and so the, and, the, and so typically and they circulate that material digitally so they do not print either um that much okay. but they probably will be using them you know to cover walls in the, I, I can't imagine that they won't be using that material. Um, so that might be a, um, having you know, the kind of blow up effect of a projection without the light source. I, I don't think they will be projecting slides, but who knows, mm -hmm. maybe. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And there's a question in the, in the slides, um, in the chat, sorry, you have a sense of other project I see documented using colored slides. Um, so after, um, so after the 1940s, um, there are some slides produced in the early 50s. Um, they and 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 so they they document you know the different buildings um, mostly. So you know in a way that's more kind of classical. You know, if you have to give a slide lecture to this or that group, you need to have. Um, to be able to show the all the different aspects of the of the housing stock but there's a very interesting so what what i have not addressed today because of um, time um is an extremely interesting second body of slides that focus colored slides that um focus on racial integration which was um, a huge issue for Chicago public housing, and that caused the demise of Elizabeth Woods and the end of the progressive era for the CHA. So the, it's really ended any, ty any type of uh, politically liberal um, approach at the CHA. But anyway, so there's in the early 50s, there are photo photographs um, in black and white, obviously, but also um, a renewed use of the slides, apparently, to, um, to document um, integration in in garden, I mean, to have the kind of additional effect of, you know, integration in paradise somehow, um, and um, and these are in fact probably the slides that the public housing museum would be using um, in its um, in its museum. But and that's an extremely interesting um, body of photographs because so these were well produced by professional photographers, 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 photographers. To also to, to, to have good images of children on playground, for example, uh, and also because some photographers were specifically in, you know, had a kind of social approach and were interested in this as opposed to, or charged with this as opposed to photographing just buildings. Um, but it's but the question of the use, the use of the slides and who, and, and, and so the absence of any kind of scripts and the lack of archival records as to who would you know, see these lectures or whether the slides were actually used or not. Um, that's, that's another research, avenue for research that I have you know, not been able to completely map out yet. But yes, that's, the, that's a post 1940s um, corpus that was, uh, and I have one slide from the 40s that shows one white girl and one black girl in an African-American development in front of flowers. But again, I, so it's a striking photograph, but, um, and I have no idea how that white girl could be at the center of the black belt in a black public housing. You know, is, is she the daughter of some of someone of the from the housing authorities? But that's that that begs more questions than the than the later corpus. That's very clear. That seems to be very clear in terms of uh, getting more um, positive images of um, of integration. But these are more difficult. In, so the, the flower photographs are very nice because of their subjects and because uh, they are from that period when the CHA was able to to do its job quite well. And the and the interracial photographs are quite poignant because they are they are very beautiful in various ways, um, but they are also very close to uh, instances of, of, of violence. And and so it's it's a, it's the moment when the visual culture of the of the authority also asks many questions about the you know how important are these images or was did, did the CHA think it was doing anything valuable or important when it was asking for these types of photographs or so that those are more um, more complex questions. But yes, so there are slides after the forties. 
Thank you. Um, are there are other questions? questions? I could un ask one more question. If uh, yeah, if you want. no one, has, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's bad. Um, I thought you were breaking up, Marie. I find it very interesting that <laughs> you mentioned that people were shown. Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can hear you now. Can, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, can sorry, hear you. I, have a, I have a network problem. Um, so, sorry, I hope you can hear me. But my question was about gardening. Um, and it was about the fact that you mentioned that people were shown uh, not gardening, but, you know, showing flowers or just being among flowers. And I was, I mean, I find it interesting because I also think of um, what it means, I mean, symbolically to show a garden and people in it. So do you, um, I don't know, because you could think that if they wanted to show, you know, I mean, something moral, something uh, about the power of the lawn or, or flowers, they could have shown people working. And I don't know, do you have any interpretation of this? Well, I think it's really part of the, of the specific um, program for those images that were really um, planned for and made, collected and used in order to, 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 to motivate people to, to, to do more gardening. And so mm -hmm. um, this is, so other images and typically the, the photographs, the interracial photographs of the early 50s show children and get, you know, being in nature and, and draw on that, on that moral or positive um, associations. Mm -hmm. um, and here it's, I think it's really much more it's it's a list the the ones that the photographs that really show just flowers. It's a, it's almost like a mail order catalog for mm. for seeds. I mean, to a certain mm. extent, it's, there's there's something that's really that that that's really like advertising. And then the I have not for the forties. I have not seen photographs or slides of um, of people actually being engaged in gardening, which is surprising for uh, if, we, if, if I think of the visual culture of housing authorities that typically show cultural change in action or into new kinds of citizens. Um, but I think this is really how, you know, the kind of high level of specificity of these images that were really just meant to make people happy about the flowers they were going to plant. And But it's also what makes these photographs of residents among their flowers or showing their flowers Really striking because they are not uh, playing the part that the um, communication of CHA needs. They are not providing examples of their own reform. Also, in terms of the um, collab collab collaborative dimension of any type of photo of post photo, um, this is uh, this is really different. And the other thing is that there's a lot of photographs of children in public housing in general, because for obvious reasons having to do with the place of childhood uh, in in social reform and social programs, but um, and, and also because children make for better photographs usually, and, and, but probably because they lend themselves, you know, they're outside and they lend themselves to the photographers. And there's a few photographs of children who appear to be sulky or, or are not very interesting, but that's, but most of the photographs of, um, of children are usually, you know, they, they are, they are, they show success if you wish of the photographic, photographic endeavor. And for the garden photographs, it's only adults. And, and we, all, we also see, there's some families, so mothers and children, and sometimes some children, but mostly um, grown-ups and also men, which is not very common. Uh, so usually the playground is a space where you mostly see women and children. And uh, so this is another um, specificity. Yes, okay. Thanks. Ariane? Yes, yeah, so I just have a, a very quick question. Uh, many thanks for this fascinating talk. And I apologize for having missed the beginning. So maybe my question is not relevant at all. Um, but um, I was wondering to, uh, to what extent um, can these photographs be compared to the use of photography by sociologists at the University of Chicago? And are there any traces of influence? Or on the contrary, are they trying to, to 
show uh, opposing pictures, different pictures from these uh, slum pictures uh, taken by Lewis Hine, etc. I was wondering if, well, une question comme ça. Yeah, that's that's um, when I so that would be um, that would that's a question that one can ask of the of the non gardening photographs maybe or the, mm. the other mm. uh, the rest of the photographic record. When I started researching um, the photography of, of, of the CHA, I, I was hope, obviously I was looking for this because I think we see photographs of we see the pub, we know these photographs from publications and therefore from people who have actually made books or uh, or produced images as part of um, reports or and in Chicago there is uh, for the previous era for the 1910s and 20s the photography of housing conditions is directly linked to the, the new surveys are produced by the School of Social um, Work uh, and, and by the settlement houses linked to the University of Chicago so there is but but then in the 1930s it's much more it's it's more um, action uh, reform in action because 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 of the new deal and then the, the new legislative achievements um, of the housing acts and therefore the people who take photographs usually are parts either of or of specific professional organizations or they are part of civic groups or neighborhood groups that try to call for more um, you know more funding for redevelopment or something like that um, and those images are more um, are part of um, of reform in action rather more than and on the other hand uh, research social research about um about housing is there's not involved photograph very much and there's, but there's one case um there's the case of louis uh, worth with it um at the university of chicago who was um well obviously a major figure of urban sociology and he was interested in photography and his archives show examples of you know, he, he sends lists of changes to be affected on this pamphlet by this or that group because it's ineffective or so he's interested in public relations and visual communication and photography, but that's also because he's part of those civic organizations for urban renewal. I mean, he's, it's, if he was only an urban sociologist and not someone who had directly taken part or almost in urban politics, in fact, at the time, he, I don't, I'm not sure he would have been so interested because this is a time when it's more about, uh, to, to my knowledge, more about either um, record or um, communication and convincing people to to do more rather than um, developing knowledge. That's that's my experience of the of looking for photographs of housing and not finding them much in all the University of Chicago sociological record. <laughs> And, um, as opposed to the previous uh, decades, and uh, but seeing all these links between making making and using photographs and trying to change people's minds or do even more practical things than change people's minds about public housing, like you know actually moving them to um, garden, for example. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eliane. Thank you all. Um, of course, if there's one last question, we, we can make the time. But otherwise, maybe we'll say thank you to Eliane. Um, I'll just briefly introduce the next session, which um, I need to get the screen up, uh, will be on the 11th of April. Uh, we'll be uh, hearing uh, Frau Gowley, uh, who's at, from the University of Bristol, and she's going to be, will carry on uh, exploring the relationship between visual culture and material culture, but this time through collage. Um, so collage before modernism, composite cultural production between 1680 and 1912. And I highly recommend um, uh, Frau, she's a great scholar, so that should be really interesting. Um, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs>